Hello, my friends, and welcome to Josie's Art School, episode number 187. We are going to create today something I'm calling a fancy flamingo. So let me show you some examples of how we can create this flamingo. So we're going to be working actually in portrait mode so we can have a decent size flamingo. And this is eight and a half by 11. Uh, pieces of paper. I'll be working on 11 and a half by 14 piece of paper. And in this one, as you can see, this has a beautiful sunset going on behind the um, behind the flamingo. And then of course on this one, this is actually, um, they're both in the water as you can see, um, but this one actually has a crown on its head. So as you can see, you can get pretty whimsical with these uh, drawings and I hope that you really do um, get inspired to do that because listen here, over at Josie's Art School, <laughs> this is something I used to wear when I was on, <laughs> on, um, on Out School, which is a place I used to teach art online and I still do actually. So you can check me out over there or Maybe you've joined me here because you bought one of my art kits, which thank you very much. And you can go ahead and take them out and get ready to get started. You should find Canvas. You should also buy, find the instruction pages for how to create this flamingo, but you can follow along with me. Um, now, if you have just joined me here because you saw it said feisty flamingo and you're like, I want to do that. I'm so glad that you're here and you can use anything you have on hand. For those that got the art kit, inside is tempera paint for you. But you um, can use anything you like as well. I normally use watercolor paints and I use oil pastels. And then I also use Crayola crayons. So um, I like all three of those mediums because you can really play with them. And especially when you're on camera, it's really very nice and vibrant. So you can really see what's going on. Um, and that's what I love about doing this kind of work with you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to grid my paper before um, we start. So what I'd like to do is I like to put uh, a line down the middle and across the middle. And of course this is in portrait mode, okay? And before I get started, and you'll have to think about this as well, you need to decide whether you want your flamingo to be facing the left or the right. When I'm doing my project, I'm going to be having it face the right. So here is where the shape of the head is going to go. And as I can see that right there, I might be regretting putting that head so big, but we'll see. We'll have to work with it. All right, so once you have the circle there, then you're just going to follow the shape of the circle very much like if you were following the shape of the back of a flamingo, right? So you've got that kind of curved look. And then just stop at the bottom there. And once you have that there, you can decide whether or not you want to go up and around this way or if you want to go over the top. Here's what I mean. So if you go down and around, you actually can take this line and just go up like this, okay? Or if you want a very long neck, you would go up and then you would turn this way. So do you notice it could be higher up where I have it or you actually can go lower down. And actually these show two different ways in which to do it, okay? So that's what I have here. And then once I've made that choice, then I'm gonna come back around here and I'm going to add the shape of the neck. So that front part of the neck so it's elongated, okay? All right, so once I have that, then you know they're very famous for those long legs. So you just make the leg, have it bend a bit, and then the next one you can have come straight down. We haven't done anything yet. Now you're setting the stage for it. So here's what I'd like you to do, especially if you're using pencil. You want to pick up that piece of paper and put it in front of you and see if this shape is coming together the way that you want it to. Okay, this would also be the time if you wanted to add a baby flamingo, you would add it right there. Okay, so I'm looking at my drawing. I like the way it's shaped. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a triangle here on this leg and then a triangle here on this leg. 
And again, this is just your basic shape. You can play with those shapes in just a moment, okay? So now I've got the head, I've got the neck, I've got the body, and I've got the legs. So now we wanna come in and we wanna put that elongated beak, right? And you can do that a couple of different ways. Come straight out, and then down, and then come back, and back. And there you have it, okay? Now you can do an eye, either opened or closed. This one shows a closed eye. This one shows an open eye. I'm gonna do a closed eye. Add eyelashes if you want. Okay, and then pick it up again. Is this coming together the way that you want it to? I hope that it is. All right, so now here is your basic shape, and this is where you can start to get a little more detailed with what you're doing. So again, if, you're decide, if you have the art kit, you're gonna have these examples in your paper, but are in your box, but what you can do is now you know um, that the flamingo has that feather base right, on its body. So you wanna start being very loose and just add the texture. And of course, as you add the color in, this will come become a much more lifelike. And then the same thing with the base. You want to then come back and just add in the feathers right there. Now, you can double up now on the texture for the leg. Add in maybe some lines. I would say if you're doing any sort of pattern, whatever pattern you do on one, try to mimic it on the other. And then maybe add a little more pattern and tech and detail to the leg, to the feet. Okay? And then step back and look at it. Okay? This is kind of your basic look here for your flamingo. You want to add possibly a little more, let's say, of the feathered look. to the back of the neck. I would then say make your choice as to where you want the waterline, if you want it to be your flamingo to be sitting in a waterline. And then do you want to mimic the sunset? Do that as well. Or maybe you have something else in mind for where you want your flamingo to be sitting. Okay. You could add some sort of water foliage, plant life. And again, a lot of these things you can wait until you start your painting process. But what I like to do is I like to give my, um, I guess my muse, for lack of a better way to say it, something to work with. So I put a little something on the page and then I will, what we call, allow it to grow as I'm adding color, okay? So again, we've had, we have the beak. You can go a little more detailed in the beak. Maybe add that line that you see in the beak of many of, uh, in many of the birds. If you want, you could add a crown as well. That's kind of fun. Maybe add some jewels to your crown. All right, so this is kind of my basis right here. And then I'm gonna start filling it in with color. Okay, so again, as you're working, before you make this next step, if you wanna add a little more, maybe go ahead and stop the video and join us once you're ready to start painting. Or you can keep going while I'm talking through my painting as I'm painting through it. But pick it up and put it in front of you and just ask yourself, is there anything else that you might wanna add? Oh, I know, I might wanna add the wing. So let me just add a wing right there. And also, let me add this undercarriage here. All right, 
Now, because I put so much texture in the feathers, I have to remember that I want to put a sunset there. So I think that's where I'm gonna start, is I'm going to add my sunset in. It has been quite a while since I've seen a flamingo in person. What about you? I think one of the things that draws me to the flamingo is that it seems like it's unstable because of the size of the body in comparison with the size of the legs. And yet they seem to be so graceful with their movements. And I also find that many young children love the flamingo because of that infamous, famous color many times is pink, right? All right, so I'm going to add a little more detail here to the crown. I'm just going to scribble in a little bit just to add some texture there, and then I'm going to paint on top of it using maybe a purple. If you have crayons or oil pastels handy, I would encourage you to just add a little something to your painting before you start adding to paint, just to give that fun texture to, um, to your painting. Because what I find is that texture really does bring your paintings to life. I don't know if you think the same thing, or if you've never tried it before, I'd say give it a try. Okay, so now I kind of have my base colors here. It's more earthy colors. And then from here, I think I'm gonna add more colorful tones to the flamingo. So a little bit of magenta. And then from there, I'm going to come back in with an oil pastel, maybe add a bit of gray. And then really bring the painting to life by adding in the color of the water. Now, you can choose to put your flamingo on land. I should have mentioned that before. It doesn't necessarily have to be in water. So whatever your inspiration is, I want you to go for it. What I like about this Artist Loft brand of um, watercolor paints is that it has not only a really lovely color palette, but it has lots of different choices in the primary color factory. <laughs> because what I find, I work with a lot of young students, and what I find is they really do love the basics, the yellows, the reds, the blues. And so those are the ones that I tend to when I use my watercolor paints in class. Those are the ones that are usually used up the most quickly and what's left over, unless we're doing landscape, then green would be gone too. But usually I have a lot of yellow left, <laughs> a lot of brown left, you know, so it's just one of those things where I used to be so frugal and like, I don't want to throw it away. There's still some yellow or there's still some brown, but I've since learned that, you know what, you're just going to have a ton of um, watercolor trays that are just going to have these colors that nobody's using. So you either need to just donate it to someone or you need to find a project that's really geared towards those colors. Oh, I got my paper a little too wet there. Well, look at that. It kind of gives it a little bit more texture. So maybe that's not a bad thing at all. 
All right, so I put my water in there. So now I'm trying to figure out, do I want to go super dramatic and maybe make a, uh, a purple sky since it is, the sun is setting. Maybe I want to add some purple there. I will say a close sec second is the purple that gets used very quickly in a classroom setting. Oh, I really do like how that's coming together. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to add maybe a bit more orange in that sunset and really bring it to life. Now this might be something if you are using, you know, just your pencil, that after you're done painting, you might want to go around your painting with either a, a black pen or a black Sharpie or even a crayon to really define those areas that you really want the eyes to be drawn to. once I'm done. Okay. Now all I need to do is figure out what I'm doing with the legs. So I mentioned the art kits and I do have all different types of art kits. Um, you actually get to choose which uh, projects are in the kit. Um, and they come with two, three canvases and they come with the tempera paint and they also come with the instructions inside so that you can follow along with me at home. Um, and then I also offer sewing kits as well. So if you are looking for ways to stay more creative, perhaps you have made a New Year's resolution that you want to do more creative type projects and you don't want to you know, scour your local craft store to get everything. The, the box that you will receive actually has everything all in one place. It has your paint, it has your pencil, it has your, um, your, um, uh, your paint brushes, and of course it has your canvas, it's flat panel canvases. All right, so now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more white. And then go through it one more time with my watercolor paint and see what the result is. All right, wish me luck. Aha. Well, there you have it. My motto is always to trust yourself, right? You're always learning. Even when you make a choice and you go, oh, that wasn't really how I wanted it to come out. You know, the reality is you're learning something every time you decide to take on a creative endeavor. Okay, add a little bit here. All right, my friends. Well, I am very excited about this one. I love it, actually. And I hope that you love how your project came out as well. I would love for you to send me what you have created or maybe put it on Instagram and tag me under Robin underscore Norgren over at Josie's Art School. If you are not already subscribed, will you please subscribe to my channel, like and share, and hit that notification bell because I put up videos at least two times and many times three times a week. I am so glad that you've come by and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.